Hello to all my friends and subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce myself. I'm Jack, the Cockroach Slayer. In this video, I have assumed, like I always do, that you already know the basic knowledge in parametric modeling with this application. If you are a newbie, you can still follow the video with use of the pause and play button or the slow and stop motion features in your player. There is a subtitle below provided for your reference and I'll be taking you for a ride throughout the video. In this way, you may be able to create or make the model featured here and in our other videos. We hope that you will enjoy watching this video as much as we did making it. Please don't forget to subscribe and click on the like button below. Thank you very much. Did I just said take them for a ride? Where will I take them? Will they all fit in my car? What's wrong with you guys? Yes, really. <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. Good day to all my friends and subscribers. Today we'll start again with another project. In this video, we'll be doing the connecting rod. Go to the ribbon and select new part. On the window select standard IPT. Click on the create button. We will start with this 3D sketch by selecting the XY plane. This selection will bring us up front. On the command ribbon, select the circle. On the screen, create a circle and dimension it to 55 millimeters. This will be the diameter size of the crankshaft part with the same dimension. Create a line going up and dimension it to 120 millimeters. On the other end of the line, create another circle and dimension it to 28 millimeters. This will be the top side that will be connected to the piston. Convert this solid line to a construction line. Create a slightly diagonal line from the top circle to the bottom circle like so. And then another line opposite the first line. Connect the two top ends of the lines with the horizontal line. Then convert that line to a construction line. Check that both lines are connected by moving the horizontal line. Create another horizontal line just like the one on the top. Jumpy and grumpy if you grab it from the tail. Grab it from the body. No stress. Create another circle here and dimension it to 40 millimeters. Create a circle here and dimension it to 70 millimeters. Make sure that all of these lines consist of a closed loop. Now we will create a solid extrusion. On the 3D model tab, select the extrude icon. Verify the profile button is active and proceed to select the profiles for extrusion.
extrude the selected profile to 20 mm. Now, it looks like a bat, out of hell. On this sequence, we will create Philip contours for the connecting rod. Fill up these edges manually. 96.5 mm looks good. Press OK. Fill it, both these edges, manually. 19.25 mm looks fine to me. Press OK. On this section, we will create the part where a pair of bolt and nut hold the end of the piston on the crankshaft side. Select the XZ plane to make it temporarily visible. Press F7 to section the part through the plane. Create a horizontal line, then convert it to a construction line, and then snap it to the center point of the sketch. Make a circle of each end, and dimension it to 12 mm. Our objective, is to thread this, at 12 mm by 1 mm thread pitch. We will adjust the diameter later. Since, I sometimes forget, what size of the hole, will be. Set both diameters equal. Adjust the distance of the circles, as close to the edge as possible. This is the size of the bolt, that will go, through the hole, at the edge. Create a slot, from center to center. And expand it. close to the edge of the solid part. Set an arbitrary dimension, so it will not move. A dimension, is also a constraint. On the inspect tag, select distance, and measure the distance between faces. This distance will set the dimension, for the width of the slot. Enter the value, of 10 mm, directly on the dimension value, on the visible sketch. Double click to set the value. On the 3D model tab, select the extrude. And extrude the sketch, symmetrically. To 50 mm. Now, we will cut anything, or anyone that we don't need. In this case, we don't need the extrusion on the center of the big hole. On the 3D tag, select the split button, and turn on the visibility of the cutter surface. Time to show them what we've got. Make sure the trim solid button is enabled. Select the surface for the split tool, and the extrusion for the solid. The arrow shows it will, cut anything or anyone inside. Press OK to kill them all. Once again, hide the cutter, so they don't see, what we've just done. Now we can view the consequences of our actions. The distance here is a little wide, so adjust the distance, by going back to the sketch, that drives the extrusion. Adjust it very slowly. Don't be pet away. The other side will follow, since the line that controls the distance, is constrained in the midpoint. Now the distance, is reasonably smaller. For now, fill it, the side edges, and make it look, like, a professional looking, connecting rod. I presume that you already know, how to do these kind of things. You, will have to experiment, and discover how Philips work by stages. 
It is not enough that you just got lucky and quickly saved the model. You have to know how it works. And when you know how it works, everything about fillets is just a walk in the park. When you fillet edges near a bolt hole, make sure that it is not the bolt head that shits on the fillet. This one will be a threaded extrusion. The bolt head will be on the other side. Next, we split this part in two solids. Select the split button on the 3D model tab. Make sure you select the split solid and not the trim solid. This will only split the solid in two while keeping both. Use the plane as the splitting tool to divide this solid. There is only one solid so you need not choose. After the split, you now have two solids on the browser. I see a protruding bulge inside the hole. We need to get rid of that. Our approach for this bulge is to remove it with a surface. The surface cut seems better since you will not need another sketch to cut another protruding solid or surface in the future for this hole. The cutter is already built in. The video is already self-explanatory as we have already done that earlier in this video and further witnessed the consequences of our actions. The surface is created. Mirror the surface on the other side with the center plane. Any features, surface, or solids can be mirrored, as you can see. At this point, we will remove the offending bulge with the newly created surface. Select the split tool and the ribbon. On the split tool, select the trim solid button. Select the surface cutter and the solid to cut. and click apply. While the split tool is still active, again, we do the same on the other side. Turn off the visibility of the surface. It has, for now, done its work. Create a sketch on the lateral surface. Remove some material on this solid to lessen the weight. Before you create the circle, select the project geometry button on the ribbon, then select the edge of the hole for your center reference. Select the offset button on the ribbon and offset the projected circles accordingly. The size does not matter at the moment, we will set the dimensions later. Project the edges, as shown, and offset each of them, symmetrically. Dimension the distance between the lines, to 8 millimeters. Extend the offset line enough to cross over the other offset lines made earlier. Trim off the unwanted lines and rends to make a closed loop. Select the extrude button on the ribbon and select the closed loop profile. Verify that it will be a cut operation. Reduce the cut depth 
to about 4 millimeters. Not too much, that it will weaken the connecting rod structure. And enough to lighten the part significantly. Fill it the edge manually. It is best to eyeball the part, than to just input arbitrary numbers, and believe it. Fill it in pairs, while manually pulling, on the dinger limb. Select the mirror button in the 3D tab of the command ribbon. Next, select multiple features, on the browser. Then select the mirror plane, on the browser too. Now, it shows a preview, of things to come. Select OK, to execute the command. Now, we have a slightly lightened, connecting rod. Measure the distance between sides. See, that this is 20 millimeters. The space in the piston created on the other video is about 30 millimeters. We will need to extend this part, so it will not wander on its own somewhere we don't know. After creating a sketch on this surface, select the project geometry, and click on the edge of the circle. Inventors virtual spaces at infinitum. It will freak you out, if one of your part, wandered about 4 light years away. Now, we extrude the sketch, to 5 millimeters on this side. Then, mirror the extrude feature on the opposite side. On the mirror command menu, select the extrusion. And select the mirror plane. And press OK. Now that we have both sides extruded, proceed, to add some fillets on the part. Adjust the fillets manually, so you can eyeball the approximate size. Hold on the ding-a-ling and pull it slowly, while watching the numbers increase or decrease. Depending on which way you move. 21.750 mm seems to be a nice value for this fillet. Press OK. On the 3D tab, select the mirror button. Then select the feature you just made on the browser. Then select the mirror plane. And there you go. Now, it looks like, a decent looking connecting rod. Collapse the browser pane, and check if we still have two solids. Turn off the visibility of this solid. Create a camphor around this area. The camphor must be very small. Great! 0.25mm is a good guess. Reverse the visibility of the two solids, so to camphor the opposite side. I presume you already know how to camphor. Select camphor on the 3D model tab in the ribbon, then select the side you want to camphor. Enter in the size, and there you go. After a slight model mangling, this is the result of what we've done.
I can see the hole. Create a 1mm pitch thread on the other side. Turn off the visibility of this solid. Select the hole button from the 3D model tab in the ribbon. Select the concentric placement from the drop down menu. The solid is already selected. Just select the plane. Then the hole for the concentric reference. On the hole menu, select the threaded hole selection button. Make sure the visibility is on, find my grandfather's eyeglasses. Select the thread type to metric game profile. Select the size for 12mm by 1mm thread pitch. However, the hole made earlier is bigger than 12 mm. So we will go back in time and fix it. I'm waiting for Marty McFly. Going back in time, select the extrusion that made the holes. Select the sketch that drives the extrusion. Adjust the diameter right off the bat. Exit the sketch and return to the current model. Now, start a hole with a slightly smaller diameter in the ribbon. Select the concentric placement from the drop down menu. The solid is already selected. Just select the plane. Then the hole for the concentric reference. On the hole menu, select the threaded hole selection button. Select the thread type to metric game profile. Select the size for 12 mm by 1 mm thread pitch. I will sound boring if I repeat it again for the other side. Now the thread is created without breaking a sweat. For the other solid, increase the hole size to 12 mm. This is what you will do in real life. Drill a hole in it. Select the hole button from the 3D model tab in the ribbon. Before the hole operations, turn off the visibility of the other solid. Select the hole button from the 3D model tab in the ribbon. On the placement drop down menu, select concentric. On the hole type, select the through hole radio button. Wait until the entry changes. At the fastener section, in the fastener type, select the hex bolt on the drop down menu. Select the size to 12 mm. Select the fit to close. Now, select the plane where the hole will start. It must be flat. Then, select the center of the hole for concentric reference. Verify if everything goes as planned. Then press OK. Verify that the fit is close. Check if the hole goes through. Then press OK. Repeat the operation on the other side. Just like a while ago. Check if the hole goes through. Then press OK. Add a small fillet on this side. Just enough to remove the sharp edges. There you go. 
turn on the visibility of the other solid body. So we can see the whole connecting rod. Inspect further, if something was missed, or overlooked. Select the materials on the tap bar, and proceed to apply materials on the solids. Aluminum 60, 61, would be a good choice. In choosing, and applying materials, make it as realistic as possible. Do not select gold or silver on the con rod, or screw. I've seen people do that, and it looks beautiful. But, in this case, the value of the model is reduced. Only James Bond, would want a golden gun. Now that the model is done, go ahead and save the model. Sometimes, it is best to save your work every few minutes, after you have accomplished an operation, or before you would try something new. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to click on the like button below. On the next video, we will begin on the air-cooled cylinder block.